Hello, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. A DAP MP has lodged a police report against Muhyiddin Yassin and accused him of playing up 3R issues to get support in the upcoming state elections. DAP's Bukit Bandera MP Sharlina Abdul Rashid has lodged a police report and called for an investigation against Perikatan National Chief Muhyiddin Yassin. This was over a speech by Muhyiddin at a trauma on Sunday. Sharlina urged police to investigate Muhyiddin under the Sedition Act and Section 505 of the Penal Code for statements conducive to public mischief. Sharlina reportedly said that this was hypocritical behavior by PN when they themselves used the 3R issues during elections. Their intentions are nothing more than to create hatred and fear among voters for Pakatan Harapan, she was quoted as saying by Sinar Daily yesterday. During a drama in Kapar, Selangor, on Sunday, Muhyiddin claimed that the government's decision to drop an appeal on Jill Ireland's Allah case showed that the administration led by Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim agreed with the court that Christians can use the word Allah. Muhyiddin also reportedly alleged that Anwar was pressured by DAP into dropping the appeal. Anwar had previously explained that the government's decision to drop the appeal was to amend laws that leave room for contradictions on the Allah issue so that the matter can no longer be challenged in court. The government also plans to limit the use of the word by non-Muslims to those in Sabah and Sarawak. DAP Secretary General Anthony Loke had also denied that the cabinet decision to drop the Ireland appeal was influenced by DAP. A Bersatu leader has voiced out against several candidates that his party decided to field in the state polls. He said several of the candidates had already been rejected by the people in GE15. Bersatu Supreme Council member Muhammad Faiz Naaman has voiced dissatisfaction over the party's decision to select those who were defeated in the 15th general election to contest in the upcoming Selangor state elections. This included candidates such as Azmin Ali, who is contesting in Huluklang, Rina Harun in Batu Tiga, Sasha Laina Abdul Latif in Bukit Antarabangsa, and Dr. Afif Bahardin in Taman Medan. According to Utusa Malaysia, Faiz said he personally raised the issue with party president Muhyiddin Yassin as well as in meetings, but was told the candidate's pick was final. He said the problem had also occurred in the Malacca and Johor state elections, where they suffered defeat due to the wrong candidate selection. According to Faiz, the data presented in the meeting showed they had support while post-mortem proved otherwise, and the issue is being repeated in the upcoming polls. Meanwhile, Faiz said he respected the explanation by Rina over her candidacy in Batutiga. However, Faiz told Malaysia Kini that he will leave it to the voters to decide on Rina's sincerity come polling day on August 12. Earlier, Rina had explained that while she chose to take a break after her GE15 loss in Sepang, she was instructed by PN Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin to contest the Batutiga state seat based on her position in Bersatu and PN. Rina said she realized that there are mixed views from the public, with some agreeing and others disagreeing. But this is the strategy chosen by the political movers who know better what is best for the party and the people. In conjunction with the state elections, from now to 13th August, you can access Malaysia Kini for free when you register with us. We want to keep all Malaysians informed so that you can make your choice wisely with your ballots. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on your screen to enjoy reading Malaysia Kini for free. Now back to the news, a past MP has accepted Rafizi's debate invitation. The debate will take place on August 9th. Past Assistant Secretary General Muhammad Shahir Che Sulaiman has accepted a debate invitation by PKR Deputy President Rafizi Ramli. This came after Rafizi's previous debate invitations to PN were turned down. The debate will take place on August 9th. However, the venue along with further details has yet to be announced. In a post on Facebook, Shahir said Rafizi would be tasked with choosing the moderator, format and venue. He added that he proposed Malaysia lebih baik or a better Malaysia for the debate title. Previously, Rafizi, who is the economy minister, 
invited Bersatu Supreme Council member Azmin Ali and Kedah Past Chief Muhammad Sanusi Madnor to a debate on what is PN's economic agenda for the Rakyat. Rafizi had also accused PN of not having any plan for the economy. In a statement today, Rafizi said he had been informed that Shahir has accepted his invitation to debate after receiving the green light from his superiors. He added that he is grateful as a debate is an opportunity for parties to share their ideas and promises to the public. Shahir is a trained economist and has held positions in a major GLC. He is a first-time federal lawmaker representing Bachok and is past President Abdul Hadi Awang's political secretary since 2018. Jais has launched an investigation into an incident involving Fahmi Fadzil speaking at a mosque in Rawang. The Selangor Islamic Department, or Jais, has launched an investigation into an incident in which communications and digital minister Fahmi Fadzil gave a speech at a mosque in Rawang. In a statement today, Jais Director Muhammad Shah Zihan Ahmad said the department had received complaints about Fahmi speaking at the Nurul Yakin Mosque in Kampong Melayu, Seri Kundang, Rawang, on July 30th. He said investigations are being carried out under Section 12 of the Selangor Shari'ah Crimes Enactment on suspicion of insulting religious authorities. Shah Zihan added that officials from the mosque's official has been called for questioning and that further investigations will be carried out. He also reminded candidates and political parties contesting in the Selangor elections to be careful and avoid violating Selangor's ban on politicking at mosques and surau as prohibited by the Sultan. He said stern action will be taken against those who violate the orders. This comes following the spread of a photo on social media showing Fahmi speaking at the mosque. In a post on Facebook, Fahmi explained that he had visited the mosque for prayers and was then invited by the congregation to explain on the 1975 issue. He added that he did not touch on other matters at all. Slangor has a ban on politicking in mosques. Last week, Jais directed all mosque and surau administrators in the state to ban any form of political activities or programs within the perimeters of places of worship, including the putting up of political party banners, slogans, or logos. The AGC has yet to decide on Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi's representation letters to drop the 47 charges involving Yayasan Akalbudi. The court was informed of this today at Zahid's trial. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur was told today that the Attorney General's Chambers has yet to decide on Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi's representation letters to drop the 47 charges involving Yayasan Akalbudi. According to Bernama, AGC Trial and Appeals Division Head Muhammad Dusuki Mokta said the AGC was still waiting for the findings of further investigations conducted by MACC's Special Task Force regarding new evidence presented by the defense. During Zahid's trial proceedings before Judge Colin Lawrence Sequira today, he said the Special Task Force is conducting the investigation and there is no decision yet on it. Zahid had sent the 200-page letter of representation to Attorney General Idris Harun as a basis for consideration for the charges against him to be dropped. The first letter of representation was submitted in January, while the latest, with facts and new evidence, was sent to the AGC in February. The prosecution had also received a letter from MACC Chief Azambaki that the Graf Buster is conducting further investigations regarding new evidence presented by the defense. Zahid is facing 47 charges, namely 12 on criminal breach of trust, 8 on corruption, and 27 on money laundering involving tens of millions of ringgit belonging to Yayasan Akalbudi. The court had previously vacated trial dates from April to July while the prosecution examined the representation and waits for the MACC's new findings. Anwar is set to meet with MIC leaders. He confirmed this in his speech at a trauma in Nagari Sambilan yesterday night. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has confirmed that he will be meeting with MIC leaders today. 
Anwar was quoted by Free Malaysia today as saying that he would talk to MIC President S.A. Vigneswaran and wanted to meet all the MIC leaders so they do not misunderstand. He said this at a drama in Jaram Padang, Negeri Sembilan, yesterday. In his speech, Anwar also stressed that they must all work as a team. He reportedly said that there is no time for internal quarrels for parties in the unity government, as the sole focus has to be on saving the country and its people. Previously, FMT had cited sources as alleging that the meeting was to discuss MIC's ill-treatment by UMNO. Vigneswaran had previously said that the reason MIC and MCA sat out the six state elections was because the two parties were sidelined in seat negotiation talks between BN, led by AMNO, and Pakatan Harapan. This has led to splintering within MIC, with leaders defecting to Parikata National. At the drama last night, Anwar, however, sought to convince Indian voters that his coalition government was their best bet and could help resolve the community's issues. You are not going to get a fair team of leaders like the one we are trying to build now, he said. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you would like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.